goal setting. I'm going to give you eight goals that I'm going to have personally. And the beautiful thing is that I've had them for now the last five years. Yeah, this should be the sixth. And every year I review myself and I look at them and I see how much I've grown. But the first year I began this exercise, which was 2018, I began with like 20 goals or 25. But over the years, I have zeroed down on eight goals that really matter and they guide me on becoming the better me, the version that my wealth is looking for, the version that everything good and perfect is looking for. And um, it's, 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 it's what God requires from us that we write the vision, make it plain so that even if someone is running or you yourself is running you won't lose sight of where you're going so goal number one mental health wow it's number one it's usually top on the list on my goals and why mental health is very important to me is because i realize that when your mind is disturbed when you're stressed, you really can't do much, including wealth creation. You can't work on your optimum or maximum. And we all know by now that money is a function of work. It's good to have faith. It's good to make them confessions, uh, prophetic declarations. I do that to myself every day. And it's also good to do the positive affirmations. But if you don't have a clear mind and clarity on what you need to do, then those goals might, might be there for a very long time. So in regards to mental health, below that I had given myself five small goals. That is positive thinking, therapy, heal trauma, awareness, and then educate others. Yeah. So by the end of the year, I reviewed myself and I realized I need to go again with the same, same five pointers. The big goal being mental health. I encourage you to start your journey for mental health, thinking positively, you know, exercising uh, your brain to think positively. Even when the negative thoughts come, you try as much as possible not to linger. They talk, it's it's, it's in, inevitable not to have a negative thought coming to your mind, but how you gloss over it, marinate over it, you know, stay with it and keep it. That's, that's, that's when all the toxicity or the negative side of that begins to happen. But if it crosses your mind like this and you realize it and then you replace it with a, po with a po positive thought, for instance, sometimes I can have a thought like, my body is big. I'll never be small. I'll never fit in those. Or when I see somebody skinnier or leaner doing something or wearing something, I'm like, hmm, I'll never be that person. So I quickly replace it with, I'm actually the best size for how God wanted me to be. Or this is the size that God wanted me to be with because my bone structure is very big i'm a big girl i'm a five foot eight and my bones alone weigh 58 kgs according to my doctor so body mass where i'm supposed to be when i'm healthy is 75 kgs so 75 kilograms is overweight for somebody else so if i start comparing myself with others who have a smaller frame now my other sisters are five foot four i think and five foot three so their bone structure may not be as big as me so when they are 75 they are very overweight but when they are when they're like you know lower than that they are healthy me if i go below 75 now i will be looking too skinny and too tall anyway i'm just giving my example so uh, positive thinking i wanted to go for therapy i will continue with therapy uh, positive affirmations every now and then and then recognize my trauma 
and whatever trauma I have picked up, not only on childhood, we normally think that trauma just comes from childhood, but there's also trauma you pick as a big person through rejection, mistreatment, loss of a loved one, many ways the trauma comes to you. But the question is, are you negotiating that trauma and are you finding somebody who can hold your hands so that you can heal and that will make you know now project to others or project to yourself and then you will live a healthy life now goal number two i can stay on mental health until because when i discovered this my life really really changed i used to be an emotional roller coaster kind of a person and I would blow things out of proportion and I never knew why. But when I realized where all this was coming from, I began my journey of healing. I'm a better person. Not there yet, but at least I'm not where I used to be. Good. So the second goal, physical health. Wow, it's very important for you, even as you plan to conquer everything, that your physical body does not let you down. Many people are dying right now at 50, at 60, not because of anything else, but lifestyle diseases. Lifestyle diseases are diseases that come to us because of how we are eating, not exercising, and additionally, not having a mental, you know, a good mental uh, routine. So for me, physical health is very important. And it's the second goal that I'm having this year, and I encourage you to have one. And it doesn't have to be vague. If, for instance, I'm 83 kgs and I know I'm supposed to be 75, I just need to map out a plan to shed the extra and maintain. And how do I do that? By eating healthy. That's number one. Being at the gym or at least having a, a, an exercise routine. Pick up a hobby like swimming that will help me. Uh, adrenaline. Um happy hormones you know bring about everything that makes my physical health enhanced uh, probably join that with um because physical is also appearance fish doing facials massages um and stuff like that i'm just giving examples of goals you can have uh, about your physical health because if you write your goal there physical health then you don't have under that what are you going to do about the physical health how many kilometers are you going to be running? How much calories are you going to be taking in on a daily basis? What types of food? What are you dropping? Like, for instance, I can give you an example. This year, I have decided to drop um, uh, starches. Yeah. Last year, I, was, I, I, I stopped sugar uh, successfully. Last year, but one. Because you start... And then you fail, you start, you fail. But the whole of last year, I can say I was living a sugar-free kind of life. And I've seen a lot of benefits. And I'll continue with that. And I'll pick up now uh, cutting back on carbohydrates. Not just wheat, but carbs. Because those are the ones that uh, take longer to be broken down in the body. And they end up being stored fat. So... Under physical health, you give yourself smaller goals that are going to get you there. And at the end of the year, you will evaluate yourself. By the way, let me mention that at the end of the year, I, I normally take a day, two, three retreat. And I go through all these goals and I award myself marks and I see how badly I'm doing or how good I'm doing. And this year, I got very shocked when I saw where I did very well and where I did not do very well. Where I did very well is where I was very intentional and we'll find out together. So the third goal that you could have, that I have, spiritual growth. And um, I am a believer that if God does not help a man, that man cannot be helped. When I speak about spiritual growth, this I mean my relationship with God. And my goal is to become better and better. So under that goal, how much time do I want to spend in prayer? How much time will I spend in the word, reading the word of God? Um, how often do I go for retreats and take fasting? Uh, how do I serve in the house of the Lord and how do I serve others and how many books and which ones am I going to read? 
with his ear. Right back to you. Do you have a spiritual growth goal? Who do you believe in? Where is your power? Where does your power come from? Who makes you not fall back? For me, it is God. I believe if God had not rescued me, I wouldn't be here today. If God had not forged a path for me to be on this line of financial advisory and wealth creation, I wouldn't be here talking about you. So it's all about God. And for me, spiritual growth is important. And for, for the last um, couple of years, that's five, I have grown tremendously. I have had God for myself. Before the word of the year was released, I already knew what kind of an ear we were, I was going to have as an individual. And when I listened to every other uh, spiritual leader, it aligned with what God had already put in my heart. So I encourage you to have a spiritual um, goal so that you can hear God for yourself. Or rather, have your power coming from God. Because if you depend on your own power, and by the way, let me stay here for a while because in my journey of knowing God, I've realized that human beings are very frail. We are very limited. I am very limited. I fail. I fall. I fall again. I fall short so many times. But the God who created me, who brought me to this world, keeps lifting me up and lifting me up. Can you imagine that I'm here talking about wealth? Something that I thought had taken over my life and I was never going to conquer. But God in himself, after I prayed, according to Psalms 34, I remember uh, five years ago, that's 2018, I began to pray with Psalms uh, 34. It says, I sought the Lord and he answered me and he rescued me from every fear. Those who trust in him are ready and they'll never be ashamed. They'll never be ashamed. And by the way, for all these goals, I have a scripture backing which I'll put on the description box for those who want to take it deeper where you have a goal and then you have a verse that helps you when you're praying or when you're looking at your goal to even go deeper and see what God says about it and attach the scriptures. All right, so on spiritual growth, that is very, very important. Actually, the way I've arranged these goals may not be in order of importance. It's just how I was reviewing them and deciding whether it's a goal that i want to go with there are some goals i had like i said five years ago that i dropped along the way and i realized these are things that will happen to me as a result of others if i spiritually grow then that means all these benefits are going to be added unto me so i don't have to list them down okay good um then goal number four that i have and that you can have is career and academics wow <laughs> and uh, this is a goal that when you reach a certain age you start feeling like you don't need any more education you don't need to improve yourself but it's a lie every human being every person under the sun you have to keep learning because the world is evolving things are changing the digital world has come alive and if you don't align with what is happening if you don't learn how to you know maybe video shoot edit your videos you know put a, a, a blog across or whatever information you have if you don't learn how to transmit it through the digital platforms then you're gonna miss out so this is me saying that career and academics should be a goal and examples of some mini goals you can have under that is do you need to get a degree do you need to get a master's do you need to do that phd or is the doctorate something you can be able to achieve you need to break your career path into goals and if you're in business you also need to break down what you need the skills you want to acquire what skill do i need to acquire um i had uh, my spiritual leader the other day in a podcast say that um do you know do you, are you self-aware enough as a business person to know the energy you bring to a room do you bring like a bad taste to people when you come into a room and you don't even know about it and actually it's not even your fault 
but if you recognize that you have it you will be able to deal with it and become better appear better show up better how do you want to show up as a business person into a room when you're negotiating these big deals this has to do with learning and improving yourself so you can have that and then professional uh, courses you need to do do you need like for example in my field you need to finish that cps do you need to do cps do you need to do cfa what else do you need to do uh, to be able to become better in the finance world um, and um, do you need to watch more videos train teams so that you can get better i've learned that the more i train people i have a gift that god gave me the gift of teaching and training and i love to do that whenever i discover something i want to sit someone else down and tell them by the way this is what i've learned and maybe you can apply it's something maybe you can apply so that even you can change in this way i hardly keep information for myself because i recognize at an early stage in my career i think uh, when i was in my early in my 20s that i have that ability when i discover something good i want other people also to be part of this something good so this is me here exercising my gift uh, showing you what has worked for me for the last five years that you can adapt in this new year 2023 now the fifth goal wealth and money hey my favorite in the area of wealth management and creation i was more intentional with my spending i was more intentional with my investments i sold off what was not making me money i paid off uh, a big extent of my outstandings uh, investments i did through uh, loans and I also, I also gave more, uh, which, which makes me feel very good about myself. So under wealth and money, examples of mini goals or how you can break it down is, what are the investments, what portion of your income do you want to be investing every month? What can you afford right now? Because you need to start right now. What is it? 10%, 20%, 30%, let us start with that. Then from there through the year, you can ask yourself, Am I spending too much? Where can I cut back so that I can be able to increase my investment portion per month? Thirdly, do I need a vocation? Do I need a... I definitely need other streams of income. What can I do? What other talents can I put in place so that I can begin to make money? Extra money. Passive money. Money that doesn't require me to be there actively for it to hit my bank account. Uh, do I need to blog weekly so that I can expand my knowledge and, you know, test uh, the waters of what people are requiring out there? And then budget. How is my budget looking like? This budget, I probably, uh, probably somebody created a budget in 2013. We are now in 2023. Is it time you'll be evaluate and see, uh, is this working for me? And uh, I will prepare an episode of the types of budgets that we, sh we we have out there that somebody can take because not every budget works for everybody some people have aspects of life that others don't have so that budget may not work for them so watch out for that so that wealth and money and then number six goal brand and outlook this is going to be very important for me this year because i have already started the journey of building my empire so how do i ensure that the brand uh appears the way i see it in my head how do i ensure that in terms of the content i'm putting there it's authentic it's realistic it's applicable it's measurable and it can help somebody how do i want to be perceived both as an individual and also as a company so under brand and outlook uh, you can review your business look how do you appear how do you look image how does your wardrobe currently depict you they say that dress the way you want to be addressed and i've seen that to be true it's true even about cars on the road you you realize that people will treat you according to the kind of automobile that you have a story for another day I don't want to sound controversial here drive the car you can afford but i was just giving an example coming back to the image or the brand outlook what size do you want to appear 
I have seen people go an extra mile to shed some weight because of the image they're looking for and it's okay. And if you feel the weight you're in right now is a good weight and you feel comfortable showing up like that in the outfits that you're wearing and you feel comfortable, that's okay as well. But it's okay to have a goal. It's probably your size 18 and you are working towards a size 12. Which size do you want to be at the end of this year? And it's achievable through diet, through exercise, through sleep. Oof. I've been doing a research on sleep because I, I struggle a lot with sleep. But I'm, I'm getting better and better and better uh, by the day. I no longer believe in that thing of uh, at a transmitting. I want to work towards sleeping at least seven hours per night. Seven to nine. Nine still sounds like, oof, but I'm going to get there. But I'm coming from sleeping not even four hours per night. And it's not the deep sleep, the REM sleep, which is good. But for you to be able to rest yourself, rest your nerves, rest your mind, rejuvenate, rebuild, you have to have ability to sleep. I digressed a bit there because brand and outlook comes with you being able to rest. And then do you need to attend you know uh forums where you sharpen your skills and meet other people like i have a goal this year to just attend an international forum for um uh, professionals in my line and that function is in the month of may this year so i'm working really hard to ensure that i attend i have planned to attend for a while now but this has got to be the year do you need to have a social media presence i know that is something that some people feel it's not their thing. I used to be that person who felt I don't need to be to have a social media presence, but I've realized that's where everything is right now. That's where everybody is. Rather, a lot of people are looking for the information. So, a, 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 a platform like YouTube or IG or even TikTok is a platform that you need to put your 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 weight there because people visit those platforms and you can save a soul somebody can be wanting to quit and then you put in a clip there and they come they listen and i'll give an example i'm not really into politics i do listen and follow maybe like 20 percent of the time or 30 percent of the time because i need to know things in my line of work but i'm not an actively avid follower of politics so when i was going through tiktok i landed on uh somebody's clip uh, and he does very good political analyst analysis yeah he's a political analyst and every day I make sure i listen to him to know what is happening i'm careful of course so that i don't end up having his opinion as a final opinion but I'm just saying when it comes to finance, I'm there personally as an analyst, as a financial advisor. You can listen to me on a daily basis to get your nuggets. Another person is talking about health. You can listen to that person to be able to know what is gut health, what is inflammation. I have learned all these things through TikTok and I've become better, healthier, healthier. You know, areas that I struggled in my health, I've gotten that information in these platforms platforms i never thought i would be there so i'm encouraging somebody in terms of brand and outlook do you need to put in your content out there so that we can discover you become discoverable all right goal number seven and remember i said i'll put uh, every i'll list every goal here and a scripture backing for you to be able to go back and look at how do we ensure that as we set these goals we are praying about we're believing and they will come to pass and it's a journey I will repeat it again. I didn't start it yesterday. It's been five years. This is the sixth day of this journey of my well-being holistically. And I have made progress. But those who know me, um, who saw me a few years back and can be able to look at me can attest that there has been tremendous change and growth. And I want to share all this information with you. So goal number seven, relationships. I know sometimes we think this is automatic. No, it's not. My father used to tell us that um, 
I'm trying to say that saying in another language. Let me say it in my native language. Dogone makine. It means if you want friendship, you have to make steps. Yeah? Every relationship that is working right now, not necessarily marriage, somebody is making it work. They are making intentional steps to ensure that their relationship becomes better. So by relationships, I mean there are relationships that you need to leave and there are others you need to enhance. Maybe you're the one who's making it fail because you're being snobbish. Yeah, that's a deep word, eh? snobbish. Maybe you're not being very um, available or accessible to your friends and your peers. And uh, show me your friends and I'll tell you who you are. If you don't surround yourself with people who are propelling you to go where you, where you, where you want to be, you won't go there. And that's why many companies encourage teamwork. They, that's why there's a team, not a human, not one person, not an individual. I work in a team. And every now and then I go to my team and I think I'm the one who's going to talk to them that particular day. Then somebody, when it's their turn to say something, they talk to all of us. And I pick something and I'm like, oh, wow, if I wasn't in this team, I wouldn't have learned that today. So in terms of relationships, these are the mini goals. Eh? Do you need to go out more oftenly? Do you need therapy to heal some of the relationships that probably have broken because of you and also because of others? It takes two to tango. Do you need to travel, uh, increase your knowledge of the country you live in? Or even other countries, meet other cultures, meet other natives, uh, uh, go and find out other cultures, travel and see how people, we are all the human race. At the end of the day, we are all human beings. And God is helping me uh, these days to love everybody, depend, uh, no matter where they're coming from or what, what's their belief system, because it's not their fault that they believe what they believe. But hey, I can affect them, they can affect me. So I want to be an agent of change. What is good, I pick up. What doesn't work for me, I don't. So do you need to, you know, join a church? Yeah? We're living in times where after COVID, a lot changed. After the the pandemic, after the the, the working from home and working individually, and we learned how to do things by ourselves but that didn't change that we're still human and we need each other actually god uses people when he wants to deliver something to you so you need these people do you need to join a church or rejoin the church that uh, uh, you probably left <laughs> do you need an image makeover so that you can be more relational and uh, that people can notice you and see you. And uh, I don't want to project to anybody what is going on in my life. But these are just examples of goals that I'm having that you can pick up or enhance that they can suit your, they can suit your profile. Do you need a body transformation? And body transformation doesn't always mean uh, losing weight. No. Sometimes body transformation means even adding weight. Maybe you're not eating enough. You're getting bony and you also have extra skin that is making you look maybe older. Uh, do you need to do facial exercises or exercises that can make you look brighter, more radiant, better? I'm just giving examples. So that is relationship goals. And um, I have had this goal not for five years maybe for two i don't struggle to make new friends actually that's that's my area connecting with people uh is my area i co i make friends very quickly if i attend a forum i'll probably come out with five friends in fact i work really hard to reduce my circle every now and then i find myself i have so many people I'm that kind of a girl who used to go home with a friend over the holidays when I was in school, both in college and even in high school. I would notice people who don't have anywhere to go and I go with them. Even recently, I have gone for Christmas with friends who lost their parents, so they normally sit at home. So when I hear somebody saying they're going nowhere, I tell them, hey, we are 
uh, having a mbuzi could you join us i am relational but i still have relationship goals because they are relationships that i have lost because of me not being very accommodative or not doing my part or allowing what i'm going through on the other side affect a good relationship and in that regard it didn't work out so relationship goals are very important let me know what you think about relationship goals and all the goals i'm talking about at the description box join the conversation because i think this goal setting is very important for all of us not this year but even in the years to come and my last goal which is goal number eight social family and fun oh my goodness hey here i normally need a lot of effort because the field i'm in at work is very can be very aggressive especially towards the time people go for holidays that's when everybody wants to uh, that's when everybody wants to review their portfolio uh, check the numbers with me sit down set goals and all that so i'm always sometimes working but this year uh, the, the the year that was that is 2022 i made an intentional um, um goal to go on leave i did a leave of two consecutive weeks those leaves of no laptop no emails no th those ones that's what i did and i did that i fell off the face of the earth and it was good and beneficial and i feel very rejuvenated and it's something i want to do every so often i know we want to make all the money in the world we want to conserve time we want to do everything but guess what this body can only do so much it needs to rest so social family and fun under those you can have annual family holiday join a travel group maybe hike i had a goal of hiking last year i did zero so this year is the year host barbecues i had planned to host a few <laughs> visit extended family oh my goodness this is where it's really tricky because as we grow older it becomes very hard to reach out so when people don't reach out you don't reach out give yourself a goal to reach out to one extended family member periodically maybe quarterly half yearly yearly um or the friends that are up country as who are living in the big city in whatever state you're in you live very far away from your family if make the effort have a goal this year to make the effort to visit to visit somebody who is not necessarily your mom your dad or your brother or your sister just somebody who is your relative and they probably did something remarkable in your life if you don't put it as a goal it won't happen right so those are the eight goals that i'm gonna have that i'm encouraging you i'm welcoming you to have them with me number one mental health number two physical health spiritual growth number three number four career and academics number five wealth and money number six brand and outlook number seven relationships number eight social family and fun all right thank you for watching throughout this episode i know you have picked a goal probably you have and you're like yay let's do this and you picked another one that you didn't have let me know the goals that you're having for this year maybe i can pick up one or you know change the wording so that it can be more appealing i encourage you to put these goals in a tablet in a vision board i forgot to tell you that last year i joined a group of female friends who we did the vision board together it was different it was big and i've seen a lot of results i would like to know which goals you had last year and which ones you did very well we can have a dialogue and a discussion and do better this year i'm looking forward to this 2023 being an amazing year for me and for the people who are surrounding me and i'm committed to continue uh, creating this kind of content that will help us create not only wealth this year i'm going to expand myself to wealth health life as i know it and i know god is going to guide me and help me to be the best i can be to be able to have my growth and your growth and we shall grow together so remember to like comment and share also if you haven't subscribed please subscribe please subscribe it will help me a lot and also share to people who you think need 
this kind of content. I will also add some of the episodes that we have done that are connected probably to goal setting or that beginning of the year they can be of help. But I encourage you, go back and watch various uh, um, uh, episodes that can help you. And if this is your first time, karibu sana. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Stick around and hit that uh, subscribe button and the notification because every week they're gonna be an episode a good one that will help your life and elevate you so that we can show up better i know we did well in 2022 but this 2023 for me it's the year of turning up the heat turning up the volume just pushing harder and getting ourselves discovered the Bible says that the world is waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. We have to manifest with our gifts and our talents backed up by our God. And I know this is going to turn out to be a very good year. So have yourself a blessed day, night, evening. Share this content and stick around for the next episode. Bye and God bless you.